This year marks the 60th anniversary of the first human flight into space and the 64th anniversary of the launch of the first artificial satellite of the Earth. Following Yuri Gagarin, more than 500 people have visited near space and thousands of artificial satellites orbit the Earth. But I think you will be greatly surprised to learn that the great English physicist Isaac Newton was the first to discuss the idea of an artificial satellite of the Earth more than 300 years ago in his book, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Newton reasoned as follows. Imagine that we have climbed to the top of one of the highest mountains and are throwing projectiles horizontally from it. In this thought experiment, we will also assume that projectiles are not slowed down by air resistance. If the speed of the projectile is not high, it will fall to the earth not far from the foot of the mountain. As the speed increases, projectiles will fall further and further away. Eventually, the projectile will reach a speed such that it will never be able to fall to the earth. By deviating from a straight trajectory, it will move in a circular orbit at the same height above the earth. Such a projectile moving in a circular orbit is affectionately referred to by Isaac Newton as a little satellite. Therefore, Newton can rightfully be considered the grandfather of modern astronautics. Now let's calculate the speed at which a projectile moves in a circular orbit around the Earth. On one hand, all projectiles, regardless of their initial speed, fall to the Earth with the acceleration of freefall g. On the other hand, a projectile moving in a circle experiences centripetal acceleration, which is v2 divided by r. And it is obvious that this acceleration is imparted to it precisely by the force of gravity. So we can essentially equate g and the centripetal acceleration which is v squared divided by r. And from here we immediately find the speed of a projectile in a circular orbit by taking the square root of gi. And this speed is indeed actually referred to as the first cosmic velocity, which must in fact be imparted to an object in order for it to move around the Earth in a circular orbit. Now let's substitute the value of g with the rounded figure of 10 meters per second squared. The radius of the Earth is 6400 kilometers, 400 kilometers. And we will find that the first cosmic velocity is 8000 meters per second or 8 kilometers per second. 8 kilometers per second is a very high speed. It is 25 times greater than the speed of sound. To launch a spacecraft into orbit, it is necessary to build multi-stage rockets of which up to 85% of the mass consists of fuel and oxidizer. The launch mass of the Soyuz 2 rocket is over 300 tons. At the same time, such a rocket can deliver 8 tons of payload to a low Earth orbit. It should be noted that the value of the first cosmic speed, 8 km per second, was calculated assuming that the rocket or satellite is orbiting directly above the surface of the Earth. But in reality, of course, this is not the case. The rocket must exit the Earth's atmosphere, meaning it needs to rise to an altitude of several hundred kilometers above the surface of the Earth. This means that the orbital speed of the rocket will differ from the first cosmic speed. Now we will see how exactly it depends on the flight altitude and its effects. Let us assume that the rocket is flying at a height h above the surface of the Earth, and at the same time, the acceleration due to gravity decreases. According to the law of universal gravitation, it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance to the center of the Earth. And if we simply substitute R and G into this formula, we will ultimately obtain this final result. The orbital speed of a rocket is lesser in magnitude, the higher the orbit of our satellite or any other spacecraft, such as in general. And so we have obtained at first glance a very strange result. The higher the orbit of the satellite, the lower its orbital speed, and therefore, the less its kinetic energy. So what does this mean? Is it easier to launch a satellite into a higher orbit than into a low one? I think you will easily understand this seeming paradox. Please share your thoughts on this in the comments of this video on YouTube.